I'm Luanda Tigedi. Welcome to my story, the exciting new TV show where we speak to influential people who hail from Chesterville and surrounding areas. So now I'm we're here to interview Usendi P, the talented quieto artist, the first quieto artist to come out of KZN. So yeah, without wasting any time, Asimbon. Oh, Hi, my name is Matthew. I'm from South Korea, but uh, I came all the way to Durban from South Korea to see Sandy B. He's the best. You know, <laughs> Sandy B. He's the man. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, my yeah, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks thank for you. coming, man. Germany, Berlin, Akahuda, catch me on Wednesday, Sandy B, you know how we do it. Mr. Machovichovi, Mr. Shuren Nice, this time we're gonna be come casting. Catch you on Wednesday, Germany, Berlin, Akahuda. Peace. in the streets of Hamburg, Germany and you see your posters as well. So interesting, you know? Thank you very much, Frankfurt. You've been good to us. Now we up to Hamburg now to tonight. Sandy B, yes. welcome to my story. Thank you. Welcome to my story. It's a pleasure to have you here, man. Thank you. Um, let's just jump right into it. Yes. Tell us, uh, tell us about yourself. Uban uh, Sandy B. Um, Sandy B. Uh, that question sometimes it's difficult to 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 just answer because you know we Sabang get to Sandy B. Sabang it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Good. We um here to talk about you know where i come from with all the music business my life and everything else but uh sandy p um okay that's where i was born and um i left uh, the township uh when i was very young uh but yeah my family was originally from chesterville okay yes and um and then during the outbreak of the violence uh in the 80s chesterville uh, i mean uh, yeah, Hammersdale. During the outbreak of the violence at uh, Hammersdale, I had to move, I had to relocate. There was a, a family friend who is also somehow a, a relative uh, from Chesterville who decided to to move me from uh, Hammersdale because things were getting bad, really bad. Uh, you know, it was um, a tough situation, you know, where you could one could see, you could see it's, it's gone 
it's going to be very difficult to 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 be in in, in that area and yeah, mm. mm. there was fire everywhere so i had to move to uh, uh, uh chesterville uh, immediately before before things, things got, got bad. bad yeah yeah and uh, when i moved to uh, chesterville uh, I started, uh, I uh, but again, as i said there was a, a, a home where my family originates from uh, uro 25 uh, uh, chesterville but again, i stayed the panago road one uh, for some years with uh, this brother Okoto is late now uh, it was a very political uh, family. It's still a political, very political family. But mm. at that time, when I moved there, part of the family was Emlas uh, because they had a, a church, Emlazi, uh, and then so we stayed there in that house with uh, some of uh, his brothers, and that space alone taught me a lot of things, especially politically. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, I got exposed to a lot of things. Um, as I said, Township, Lapana Pat. I was always musical mm -hmm. uh, at the same time because uh, from the school, from class local, I was uh, in the school choir uh, right through up until I finished school. So uh, when I was in Chesterville, I carried on. Yes, I joined some some music groups like uh, gospel, yeah. uh, doing other stuff with uh, some guys trying out about my hip hop and, yeah. and, and and stuff, you know. And schooling, I was very active as well in the government. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I was very active at uh, uh, school and participating in doing in electoral SRC. Uh, I always had that leadership skill, uh, which, um, yeah, and was there, you know, uh, also to guide me, to guide, me, to guide my life. But uh, coming back to the issue as yes, yes, Hammersdale, when I left Hammersdale, I didn't know that it was that was it, that was going to be the end of my home. Hammersdale. Yeah, Hammersdale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the whole family became scattered. Banya Baya, Labea Kona, you know, Mawa Hamba, Nayambe Kasha, and Silvas of Boyas, Chesterville. So basically, that was the last time I had a place, a, a cold home, home, where, you know, I can share, I could share the space with, with the family. And then, with after your that, siblings and. Uh, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, that my siblings as well, it's like we don't come from the same mother, same father. Okay. Uh, in the family, I'm the only person uh, who, who has n never even seen his father, you mm. know. So, s some of those things also added up to my challenges. Oh, okay, yes, yes. yes. It, it, it was a huge factor. Yeah, it was a huge factor. Yes, so that family bond got lost completely. Okay. Right. Interesting, good to uh, Kuluma about um, um, uh, violence, uh, not the Melanesia and Alisus Cat. Yes, about uh, the question of Benzo Buza and what's he and Galus Catuculella for Chesterville, who join our groups and you're doing music. Yes, and how was it making music during apartheid times? Uh, what were the challenges? Uh, the Nanabo or Tambenani and any Sangani and Alisus Cat in the Tulele. Well, back, back then, because a life of a black person was was about a struggle. Mm. You, it's 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 not something that you 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 could ignore. You know, at that time, whether you're a, you're a child, whether it's not something that you could ignore because it was visible. It was there. We knew there are certain things that you can, you, you you can't do. There are certain things that you can do. You are allowed to say this. You are not allowed to say that. So, so it's actually a way of life. It was a way of life, and we never knew how far it was going to go. And and musically, we were censored at the same time. There there were lyrics that people couldn't put in the music mm. because uh, maybe uh, Abe Zoba aligned to something that is political and yeah. then and then puts you into trouble or your music just get banned from 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 a, a play mm. so there were those challenges uh, back then on, and also the whole industry was uh, controlled by by white people yes yeah if you go to, to a studio any studio 
uh, it was white people there who were, who were in charge of the whole industry, like uh, record labels, studios, and, and everything else. So um, some challenges, which which still a problem even now, is the fact that most of the people back then they didn't understand the contracts that they they were, they, were, they, they, they they used to sign, and Dutsolutu Mundu sold gold and or sold platinum but, but he didn't revenues, get anything yeah didn't get yeah. your publishing and everything so uh, your, your your music is published by uh, another person you, you don't have a share so yeah. your only share is uh, amar royalties and maybe when you get the, the, those shows and also um back then there were there were no other opportunities where Maybe if you are if you are popular in the music business, maybe you, you can also uh, add with film like yeah. how things are happening now. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because right now you will have somebody who's in maybe uh, a DJ. Yeah. The next thing is on radio, is on his acting movies, is exactly. doing that, doing the television adverts. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So such opportunities were, were not there because like. If you look at it now, there are people who are not <coughs> actually music, singers or musicians. They just want their faces to be out there so that they can expose themselves to other opportunities. Yeah. So be before, uh, there was a lot of honesty. I want to be an artist. Uh, I want to sell records. And uh, and I want to be a brand and a brand that I can protect so that I can make, music, uh, make money through music. Because, as I say, Uti, they were not so many other opportunities so those were some of the challenges i, I, I can all right remember yeah and um uh, interestingly enough you spoke about politics mm. uh going on at that time uh were you ever directly involved in politics or were you ever part of the resistance maybe uh is it go kondo sees where ganji like I, I was one of the young guys who, 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 who formed Hamas Daily Youth Congress, we called it HICO. Okay. Yeah, I was in that meeting when when uh, um, the whole thing started and uh, it was uh, something that was supposed to be an affiliate of, uh, of UDF because yeah. uh, ANC was banned at that time. So I was uh, one of those guys who, who actually formed uh, that, uh, that, 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 that yeah, I was very small. I was, I, I was young. As I say, some of the things you find yourself goes on maybe because you have some leadership qualities that maybe you you don't know. But at yeah. that time, I used to hang out with much older guys than me. Like most of my life, it was always like more, much older guys who were mostly politically in, involved. And yeah. I would also say. Uh, there were times where we found ourselves in in um, those groups where you know you have to confront uh, the enemy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you would survive and move on with life. But tough times. Yeah, tough times. Tough times. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, we we back to the music now. Yes. Um, let's leave the hectic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to know about that side because I know you've been long in the game and yes, you you've been exposed to a lot of things in your life. Yes. So going back to the music, you were in fact the first KZN based um, artist to release a Quieto project. Definitely. Tell us about that. How was how, how was it? Um, uh, some of the things come as a blessing as well because you know it was uh, it was not something that was in my head that I wanted to be known as a quieto artist. Um, I, I was um, in some other groups at that time. I remember there was a guy called Trevon Jenkins. I, I can't find him now. I don't know what happened to him up until now. But um, I was linked to him by the guy called uh, Norris Taka, move, was So we formed a, a group called Paradox. We're doing what we called Afro U, 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 European music. There's a channel we're trying to create because it was like myself coming from the African side, and he he, he was a, a white guy yeah. who 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 wanted nothing to do with Apart the situation you know, of yeah. the time and and all those issues. So we formed a. Uh, so it was like a, a kind of a Johnny Clegg kind of guy who wanted to Yes, but get we involved. did something like pop. 
Yeah. And then we started doing clubs and and, and all that. And then and then there was quite a, you know, winds blowing from from up uh, north, you know, this genre, New York genre, quite music yeah. and you know and and it was slowly taking over from public music. Yeah. Uh, and and these guys kept on coming, kept on coming, and there was, I remember at that time, there was Abo Arthur, there was um, uh, guys like uh, Abo, Abo um, Trompies, yes, yeah. uh, there was, um, there was uh, Abo Du Masilela, uh, Masilela yeah. you know, you know, you know, getting things uh, hotter and hotter in the quieter scenes, but in, jo in Johannesburg, and the sound was, was very nice, and mm. How I became a quieto artist, I was um, at the city hall. There was Miss Orlando Pirate. Okay. It, it was organized by Selby Mabanga. A lot of people will know him as Uba for Gu, uh, what was this drama on, on TV? Uh, uh, Selby Mabanga. When we sang Uba for, um, I remember this drama. Uh, mm -hmm. But he was organizing events at that time. So there was Miss City Hall at the play, uh, no, sorry, Miss Orlando Pirates at, at the City, City Hall, Hall yes. Yeah. And and I'm sitting with this guy, uh, who, who Vincent, who now is a pastor. I'm sitting at the front uh, watching other performing. Yeah. Uh, so Walter was performing at the City Hall? Uh, yes, at the City Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, this guy I was sitting with, he was, uh, in in the cast of Sarafina. Okay. Sarafina was like the top thing at the time. Though. Yeah. Well, Sarafina was big. Yeah, was big, was and it was, was like post apartheid, uh, Just yeah. 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 Just so. And and I'm with this friend of mine today, and uh, he's like, I used to call myself Sandy B Junior. It sounded nice with that junior, you know, Ray Parker Junior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, All as right. if there was a senior, but Sandy P. Junior. <laughs> sure. Sandy P. Junior. Umaya and Salem to it. Oh, so tell about the Bassa and Bassa Gordon, Bassa Gordon, Umaya and Salem to cool over the over. So at the business stage, I was just casting a little bit. And I said to him, Are you sure? But it looks interesting, you know. Yeah. You can do it. And uh, the funny thing is, I already knew Arthur, mm. and I already knew some of. Can the... you remember which song he was performing at the, at that exact moment? I can't remember. I can't remember. But all I remember is that he was wearing a, a camouflage uh, uh, outfit uh. that I remember. But uh, I already knew some of these guys because at the time I also worked at the clothing store called Fat Base. Okay. Yeah, it was one of those funky stores where most of the celebrities who like to go, you know, it was one of, like, you know, if you buy from third base, so I work there. So, so you, are, you are basically, I work if, there. You, if you buy clothes from there, you're yeah. the celebrity. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was will be celebrity. Uh, even if you're there. working there, people are like, yeah, this uh. guy is working at third base, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. and, and, Actually, that was my first permanent job, which actually paid me 600 rand a month. Yeah. I'll talk about it at some other time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so it was like, yeah. So these guys, I knew some of them. They used to, whenever they, they were in Devon, they used to come and shop at that place and I uh, used to recommend whatever that looked nice uh, on them. So we had that connection with some of them. So, uh, yeah, so this guy said, uh, Ule, Sandy P, you can do this, Sandy P Jr. I said, okay, no problem. I think it was, um, it was uh, 1994, mm. early 1994, something like that, yeah. And then uh, somewhere in the middle of the year, I started trying my luck on, 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 on that site. Uh, on the Kwaito side, and you know, and then until there was a Freedom Day bash at, at, at um, Village Green, where where 
Sun Coast is now. Yeah, yeah. There used to be a big uh, live venue space there. We, they, I think they even used to host uh, Bo Shell Roads of Fame in that same exactly, area. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so remember. that was the first quite a bash in KZN. The first quite a bash it had about 25,000 people there. Mm. And I remember um, I went to. I saw some posters and then I said I have to find the organizer. I went to, I had they were somewhere at Hawaii uh, with some artists there, Hawaii in South Beach. And then I went there and I spoke to them. I spoke to Mdungob. Yes, Mdungob from South Africa. Yeah, right Mdu now. was uh, also big in the club scene because he also owned Whispers. Okay. Yeah, so I, I went there and I spoke to him. I told him. Uh, okay, so uh, at that time, so he says late 94. Yeah, uh, it he, was early 94. Early, early 94. He already owned the club. Like, so when, he already owned a club before, way before that. Way before that. Way before well. that. Yeah, oh, okay. I was running about Whispers. I can't remember if there was another one, but I, I remember Whispers. So it was, um, it was this brother you know uh, who was very active in the in the in the entertainment uh, scene they were very close friends with Abol in the Lanham Keys as yes, well yes, uh -huh. at the time and and uh, during that time as well Linda Lani was already running things in Johannesburg you know mm -hmm. and because they're the ones who also pioneered I I I I I I quite uh, that side mm -hmm. so that bash as well, Lindelani Mkiza was part of it with Abom okay. So I went and I spoke to them and I asked if they could feature me because there was, I realized that there was no one on the poster from yeah, Devon. From Devon, yeah. It was all uh, local artists. And then they said, yeah, no, 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 no problem. I said, oh, cool. So some guys and then we quickly prepared some songs which are, we thought they were fit for, for, for that event because we didn't, actually didn't have like <laughs> so you didn't have anything that was recorded already. You asked for a gig and then you nah. went to put something together. Put something together and then we took we used some instrumentals from uh, from overseas and, <laughs> and we started rapping on top of, on top on top, on top, on top, on top of that of that. Uh. And it was interesting. The good thing I must say, what really sold me at that time. A lot of people around Devon, they already knew me because I was known to be this young boy who had style, dreadlocks, working at third place. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, I, I was a trendsetter as well in, in, in that section. So a lot, some of the guys, they, I'd say a lot of guys who, 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 who like things, about they, they knew about this, this, this boy, mm. you know. So, and then I said, because these guys are in Joburg, their advantage is television as well and also uh, at that time there was always uh, this thing about jo join us back that you know if you're coming from Joburg, yeah you know yeah yeah so i said how am i going to 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 use this opportunity to launch myself as you send the beam? because now they have featured me among these people you know and yeah and then I said, my advantage here is, it's going to be the stage presentation. I knew how to dress up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I knew how to dress up. I knew how to look nice. And I said, that's going to be my 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 weapon. Funny enough, though, um, you're talking about something that was happening back in '94. Um, you and your stage presence and dressing up on stage and making sure that your performance is always on point. It is now about 20, 20 what, 26 years later? Yeah. You still, you still make sure that those are your qualities. You make sure when you're on stage, you have that presence. You, yes. You dress up accordingly. You don't just like, okay, you know what? Yes. Bang as well, like your performer corner. I'll just rock up, do yes. a few tracks. You yes. always make sure that you prepare for your, your performance and you dress up accordingly. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So I learned from those who came before me. Because if we go back... To the guys who did public I and mean, everything if you look at their record co covers it was about style mm. 
Yeah. If you look at the covers of the 70s, 80s, even now, the guy, guys from overseas, people who are serious about their craft, it's about the style. So you have to set the, the trend. You, there are many ways to sell your music. People have to look at you. Yeah. Uh, get glued to how you look and then slowly get hooked to your music. So it was also about that. I said, you know what, guys are going to back me some of my friends because they said ah, quite oh they were like no nah, quite oh we will stick to hip hop and r and at that time but if you want to, us to help you with quite oh help you some of the friends that we used to mess mess up with you know mm. and yeah so test them up nicely and we went on the st to that stage and we were quite prepared you know that you know and mind you, at that time, audiences were very rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, audiences were very rough. They would throw things on, on stage at you. <laughs> time, 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 yeah. time. Yeah, time. So what do you see action? Yeah, if no. they don't see action, out, 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 out. You gotta be out because people were rushing for trains and all that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it can't be in town. So you better be wet there while you yeah. cannot just. So when I went, when I was on that stage. Wow. People were crazy because because I'm I've main, I mentioned on stage that I'm the only one from 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 Devon. I'm the only artist from KZ and, and everyone was yeah 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 when they put me early, it was already, it was packed. It was packed. So it was advent, advantageous uh, for me because I did everything right yeah. the way I could at the time. Okay. And, and people appreciated it. When I finished and people still appreciated it, they were like, hey, thank you for representing. And another thing is, I'm the only person who had a, a, a video camera. So while you were performing, someone filmed. Oh, okay. Even, even, even the organizers didn't have a, a footage of their own event. They had to come in and ask me for it. <laughs> I still want it. I don't know what happened to it. I don't. It came and they collected the VHS and then it disappeared with it. And that's, I, I don't know what happened to it. Uh. But I'm the only person who, who, who had. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 very small cell phone and you have to say uh, I was very small <laughs> <laughs> yeah so funny enough you you are, you are talking about um the crowds uh and uh, event organizers it, it, it actually brings me to my next question because I wanted to ask you tell us we could see how did the music scene in the 90s differ to the current scene in terms of uh crowd participation event management uh radio production uh the works um to be honest with you it sucks boys and manager people have to perform in their bedrooms <laughs> there's yeah, no yeah. there's no crowd <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah, but, but yeah you know uh when it comes to a, a crowd participation um I, I wouldn't see in so much of a difference um between now and then but also, I would say um, before you could go to a quite an event or go to um, a festival, or as we see in Ama artists, maybe who are into the same genre, would mm -hmm. um, uh, see uh, people will come there for that particular artist sometimes. Be loyal to that particular artist. You know? Well, no, I'm an artist of five, but people were like, okay, we came here to see. Yes. So and so. But then sometimes, my Utoluguti, he line up, he, he write. Utoluguti, it also confuses the he, 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 he audience, you know, because everyone is seem to be good and, and unique. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, back then, the audience knew knew the the, the 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 music and 
the, the, the artists compared to now where you go to uh, an event it's all good DJ will play play the song and all these songs sound, sound similar and and people can't differentiate between who's who because even even the artists themselves they sing the same the sound is the same mm -hmm. and and everything so I would say in a way that also becomes a challenge in terms of ama sales because you hear a nice song you don't know who, who, who sings it and the next song sounds like the one who like, like then before you know what who are the sound is different yeah and the show the audience it might my respond again they responded differently and you knew what uh, there there's this other artists who will come after who tebe who can be send the the tempo of the P is not fast, it's slow, and the reaction is 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 is, is, diff, is, is it will be different, but jolly, you know, be, 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 be enjoy a part. Um, I think I said this earlier on. Back then, again, they wouldn't take it, 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 it nonsense. If they can yeah. see what you are messing around, your your stage work is not proper, <laughs> and everything, then you start getting stuff stuff thrown <laughs> and this has happened to i've seen this happening to uh, ama groups who were very popular even back at the time even about boom mm. even about dr kumalo i've seen that no, happening but if you're no. not delivering on the day you're not delivering last week if you forget this week you, you can't um, just walk in jay walk in and, hey, 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 hey. you have to be smart if you can, if you could see, you had to be smart if you could see if the audience is the kind of a difficult audience. So you had to be smart, whatever that you prepared. And if you have to change it quickly, you have to change it quickly. <laughs> you know, you have to find another different way to, to, to get on stage. Yeah. You know, so that people get hooked on you. Sometimes you prepare something and then it wouldn't work. Fortunately, I, I was never... Uh, that unlucky to find you always over prefer <laughs> because I always wanted to even any other time always wanted to be uh, put uh, a legal program time number three number four but there were times where I would be forced by organizers to to be right towards the end because not because uh, uh, I was one of those guys would see on TV because I didn't even have a music video mm. uh, when I was beginning to get very busy you know and i always had to find tricks you know it's either if if they put me late i would first make friends with the audio with the with your audience <laughs> so you friends, stage, yeah, already yeah, yeah 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 make friends with uh, whatever I'll make friends i'll see in the audience while others are still performing the, ah the travel to some people they're in that corner <laughs> <laughs> so so i must smart, smart. I, I must talk to them make friends with them even if they didn't know that i'm i'm a performer or whatever i'll tell them hey guys i'm gonna be up there you know I, 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 and also i always had some things to to throw to the audience like caps and yeah, and, yeah. and all that uh, you know i'll tell them i'll throw some stuff I'll throw uh, yeah yeah so to your direction and, and you know you know yeah. where, hey, so when I walk in, I walk in already. I've made friends. The <laughs> trouble some guys are your friends. They're already, already my safe. friends. Or sometimes I would even make uh, those um, boards with my name on. And you hand it to them. So hand it to some a few people in the front. They'll be like, "Hey, yes, I the piece, the piece." And, we, and even the organizers would be like, oh, "This guy." You know, some of the things I would blend them while I'm there, look, yeah. watching the audience, the uh, how, uh, exactly. how the audience is towards others, and then I'll be like, and then when I finish, most of them will be like, yeah, you're right, and I'm cheating, oh, you're cheating, I don't know, and yeah, And the politics? Hmm? The industry politics? It was, all, it was always there, mm. but as I, I, I think I mentioned again, okay, um, I mentioned it earlier on that it was always there, but not as much as how it is now. But um, the biggest challenge back then, it was like Johannesburg guys wanted to rule yeah. everything. They wanted to to rule everything. And uh, somehow some people like myself 
would be a big threat to them because they could see that slowly, slowly I'm building my, my profile without even migrating to, to Johannesburg, without a television, without all, all that. But I'm, I am building this profile and nobody knew how. And some of them wanted me to relocate and go up to Johannesburg and there was always like, uh, something has to happen. Yeah, in case yeah. and someone needs to carry the torch and 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 try and make things happen for those who, who also want to get into the music industry, and as difficult as it was, and there was no money, and I was becoming popular, uh, uh, but not even getting paid because most of the events were always like it's these guys, and we're just gonna. I was pushing. Yeah, we're just gonna feature you. Mm. And it started getting me confused a bit when sometimes they would want me to be in the early times of the program. Uh, they would put me far, maybe Nabum Du uh, or Obo uh, those guys who, were, who had hits. Mm. And they would just put me there. Sometimes I'll end the, uh, sh the show or um, before someone's going to end. And it's challenging show. because mm. people are, all, are hyped up. They've just seen them too. And then. Yeah. Now you have to walk in, you have to like really deliver now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The good thing is I, I had, my music was was just unique. Since you're there, sound of like uh, with all the performing, uh, in, in, in 1995, um, you released, you, you came, into, came into fame with your debut album, A Match of Each of. It yes. was 95, am I right? It was 1995 when it was released, but I recorded the song in 94. Oh, okay, so yes. it was released in 95. Um, and how, how did it feel being a quite a star at that time? My friend. When it was official, KSNDP uh, released an album. You know, with so Ika said, Yako and... With Amachovich, let me start here. I was staying in point. There was a club called Toilet Zone and there was also a club called Club Genesis. They were both, both in point, just next to each other, basically. Uh, then I went to, one day I went to the studio, which was in South Beach, right across there by, um, like South Beach, if you go towards the beach. Yeah. Uh, the studio was a house studio owned by the guy, colored guy called Chaz Rogers. So I just went there one day to create music. I didn't have any idea of what I was going to do there. And then I was sitting there and then I played with the keyboard. And it's like, doom, 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 doom. He was busy making coffee. And then he came to me and he said, play that again. I said, dun, dun. He said, you know what, if we can put a drum there. Something might happen. Something might happen, as it is. Don't put a lot of things. <laughs> I said, what? I said, don't, we don't put a lot of things. Just that bass and we put a drum. Maybe we put a... We put a little bit of strings in the beginning or somewhere in the middle of the song. Mm. I said, yeah, then we did that. Then I took the instrumentals and I went home. And then I took the instrumentals to work again. Uh, and then I listened and I listened. And I was sitting at home and I thought of this guy uh, in Chesterville, who makes a short, a short guy who used to think, who used to say, if he dances, he, 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 he wants a macho video, macho video, macho video. So, I just laughed. I was sitting by myself. I, I thought about that, and, I, and those lyrics started coming. Okay, so that's it. And then there was this guy, Ule Komoshin. The commotion is yeah, he's uh, one of the legends uh, in, in radio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember. Is uh, yeah, he's now with uh, uh, Vuma FM. He's been with Major and everything. So he used to work part time at that place where he used to work, because uh, at that place there was also a DJ section where we used to sell CDs. It was clothing and CDs. So he used to be a part time DJ there. So one day I said, you know, let's go to the studio. I want you to help me with the packings. We just do him down, him down. Now, let him learn. Same cheat. She sang okay. So I went to the studio. We did the song, and then and then we did a rough me me mixing of the song, and then I remember it was a test day. Test days used to be very busy in the clubs because okay. there used to be a lot of uh, students coming from different campuses that were delivered by buses. 
and that's how it used to be not like now so they deliver uh, buses used to deliver students to the club students in wanted college, to go to and collect them and take them it was yeah, it was yeah, just, students, uh, way back, uh, yeah it was it was organized not like now people just go mess up any 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 time but it was like if you're a student you go at that time we knew those days were student nights so yeah. uh, there's this guy we call now he calls himself uh soul dog uh who's me so mm -hmm. yes he, he plays a lot of old school r&b now in gigs but that time was a uh, one of the djs at uh, club genesis so Kwaito used to play at 12 midnight and there was not much of Kwaito. So when you go to a club, uh, it would be, we used to call it local. Yeah. Uh, so they would play Kwaito, the international house and a little bit of slow jam and all, and all that. So at 12, you used to start with Kwaito, play a few tracks of Kwaito. So I went from the studio to collect, I came from the studio uh, with my tape that night it was on cassettes then i asked him uh, to start his set with my oh, song like at 12 o'clock you play this so the song started with a siren a siren wee, 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 wee. so the club was packed people are still sitting you know having drinks and and all that so he put the tape on and then a siren went on wee, 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 wee. and people were like huh what's going on what's going on and then that bass Gosh. ah when that bass hit them everyone was like up on their feet yeah bang bang i said yeah what's going on here first time you couldn't believe it yourself was that was that pre-release or, or after the release that was uh before okay okay before before there will be no album coming from the studio. Coming straight from the studio. From so the it's the studio. first time you're putting it out there. This 94. Mm. Bang, 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 bang. Then he said, a brand new one from our very own Sandy P. Guys, new Sandy P. Hey, Sandy P. And the song played in the middle of it. There's a part where it says, I deppen, it's in a CPT vibe. And then he stopped the song there. He had to rewind the tape. He had to say something while rewinding the tape because he wanted to, to start the song again. Uh -huh. And then he started again. Oh, People went crazy. It was crazy. Came <laughs> it was crazy. So now at least I knew I had this song. Fast forward. Uh, 1995. 1995, um, now I'm, I had met about Oskido because uh, they used to buy stuff from me mm -hmm. and uh, they were, they had just formed the Kalawa Jasmine, yeah. you know, it was picking up the head about Pumshaka and all that. So all those guys, whenever they were in Devon, they used to come to that base. Yeah, Remember some of them, I had met them at the Pesh in 94. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, so we became friends with some of them and then and then Oskido had this song Macho Vicho and then um, he decided to link link me up with uh, his uh, co-owners of the, the label Kalawa just me uh, Kalawa had about Don Laka mm -hmm. uh, Dabo, Abo, DJ Christos and the, all these guys about trumpets and uh, all that oh, yes yeah, so we'll, we'll Bruce and all that so he wanted me to be signed by Ikala or Jasmine so he, he called me up to Joe back he picked me up from McCarlton Center I went straight to went straight to Don Laka's flat to make him listen to this song mm. you know so Oskid uh, introduced me to Don Laka fine he listened to the song and Oskido was like, he's the one who was like, nodding yeah. to the song, trying to convince <laughs> <laughs> Don Laka. Hey, hey. And then Don Laka said, yeah, 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 right. But Don Laka was busy with uh, Mango Groove projects at that time. Okay. And then it was going, it was like somewhere after June. Huh? Was it after June? No, it was before June. But he, he was busy. This was in 95. 95. Yeah. And then he said, yeah, no, no problem, we can work, we can work with him. 
and um, and uh, maybe next year, you know, beginning of next year. And that was it. But Oskido wanted to give you a contract on the spot. He wanted to. But Donaga was like, okay, we need next year. Yeah. yeah, because you know they were still small, trying to figure out things as well. But mm. they were getting somewhere, you know, because they already had projects out there, people who, who knew and they were on yeah. TV and all that. And then a couple of weeks later, I received a call by a call from Tim White. Yeah. Tim White owned House Africa Records. House Africa Records, yeah. uh, they used to release a lot of international stuff like on vinyls and everything, you know, license stuff and release them. And then I received this call from Tim White. Then uh, he says, um, Os Oscar told me about you. Um, he said you have some stuff that he, that I might be interested uh, to listen to. And then I sent, I, I sent him uh, via post. And then he, he, re he replied again and he said that you have, uh, do you have more songs? I said yes. I didn't have. <laughs> nice. I said yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we went to the studios around here. I played some, some quick, quick one. Then there was student nights. There was another studio in Smith Street. It was owned by the guys called Craig and Nick. Mm. It is bedroom studio. White guys, young guys. And then we created student nights. And then we created. Uh, uh, what's this other song again? Uh, it was student nights, and I remember it. Yeah, it was quick, you know. Then student nights sang about Twilight Zone and and Genesis because the things that happened there on Thursday. Thursday yeah. yeah, student nights. So it it it, it was about that. You know, so uh, put together a couple of songs, and then I send the stuff, and then I got a call to say, "Do you have pictures?" You know, <laughs> and oh, then he said, "We can, we'll try something out. We'll just go fifty-fifty, no contracts, nothing. You know, I'll we'll just we just release the project. Yeah, we'll, we'll just press vinyls, we we'll press uh, tapes." Uh, you take my share, I take my share, and that, 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 that's going to be it. So nothing binding, nothing, nothing binding. binding. So, you know. Yeah. So, uh, luckily there was, at the wheel, there was a guy who used to have a backdrop there, Morgan's still have a shop here in, in town. He had a backdrop there, and I took a picture quickly, I had glasses on because I was not sure. What's going to happen? So I yeah. was like hiding in a way. So <laughs> this thing is not working out. People mustn't. <laughs> yeah. People mustn't mustn't recognize me. <laughs> so, so I had glasses on, but I had style with gold jewelry, jewelry and everything. I like yeah. jewelry that time. And yeah, I sent the stuff, and we made those copies, and they were distributed. Damn, they just flew out. Mm. The shelves everywhere, you know. You go to a music shop, the Akabu reliable, the stock is here, and tomorrow it's gone. How much of it was flying? Ooh, was ooh, like, ooh, okay. People were queuing in my uh, in front of my uh, my flat to come and buy the tape. I even remember because they couldn't find it in stores anymore, it's sold out. I had stock with me, you know, to push on the side. So people used to just come, and I was like selling, selling, selling. And at the same time, I have this. I had this thing in my head that I don't want to be known as a Kwaito artist. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to be labeled as a Kwaito artist because I also sing. You want to be a musician. I want to be a musician. I'm yeah. versatile. I don't want uh, to have this label that Sandy P is a Kwaito artist in case I want to do other things and then, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, Machovichovi just became that underground hit without a music video and you we go to a modern con contest and girls are using a macho video as, a, as one of the main songs for modeling. Yeah, modeling contests were like huge yeah. back in the day. I think until early 2000s or maybe around 2006, 
Yeah. Modeling contest, some look I I remember I used to organize <laughs> yeah. a lot of, of those. Yeah. And uh, then, so yeah. Um okay, no, carry on with the story because I And to and then it. and then I started seeing even taxes with my name. Yeah. And it be yeah. Much of it, of it. Uh, how? I remember that. And and I started seeing people with, with tattoos with my name on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just got it. And then I'm, I still have a job. I'm working. Mm. I can't leave my work because I, I even get advices from other people, even about in the land. You know, when I get people asking me to move to Johannesburg, I also get some advices from them to say, Can I take a chance and go? Then they'll be like, No, first be established in yeah, what you're doing now, be secured. You have a, something that pays your rent at the moment, your job. Keep it right there for now. In a way, if I look at it now, in a way, somehow I do have some regrets, but sometimes I'm proud because it part of the stories that I can tell now. And at work, there will be queues. People coming to, to so ask now, for a hug. You are basically bringing business in to your workplace. They don't want to let me go. People, I'm a good salesman person. Yeah, <laughs> at the same time, I'm just good. I can take your rent money from your pocket without realizing uh, that was very good you know i was very good i'll dress you up when, even when you came to to say hi as a friend if you had money in the pocket it's gone uh, your money because you, you're gonna buy something you i'll make you buy something you'll walk out carrying a, a packet with something and then tomorrow you'll come and complain and say, <laughs> yeah. i didn't want to buy this thing so I was, but then again with this music and it became even more because there were schools who used to bring like their scholars from maybe a bomber boarding school just to see me. So I didn't realize that, you know, the name was getting big and bigger and bigger. And yeah. as I say, no vid music video, no TV, nothing. So you didn't have a recording contract. You were not signed by not anyone. Not signed by anyone, nothing. No, no, this was my next question because... When I, I actually to... did any type of research with you, I did not find that uh, Sandy P was signed by so and so in '95. Nothing. I own my 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 music. I own, I own my. You own, I own everything. everything. So yeah. since while we're still on the match of which of uh, the projects actually resurrected in 2017. Eh? 2017. It yes. resurrected in 2017. It was actually issued by um, Invisible City Editions. This record, yeah. So this is Sandy. Basically, we want to see that picture. Saw so this picture to the camera. This was Sandy V back in the day. Yeah, this without a beard. But if you can put a beard, yeah, well, we wouldn't see much difference. But yeah, yeah. Let yeah. yeah. <laughs> me gold and Kangol. Yeah, yeah. I was the first person. Mister, to, Mister Cool. I was the first even to wear the 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 Kangol the label. label. Uh, it had been sponsored. Uh, to to LL Cool J overseas, and then they said in South, in Africa you uh, like LL Cool S, LL cool S. <laughs> <No> <laughs> Sandy <way>. P. <laughs>